Scaphoid, displaced fracture treated with a headless compression screw. Dr. Kamal Gokuz. Associate Professor Baskent University Alanya Research and Practice Center. Acknowledgement. Most of this video was created using a book source cited below. Our Manual of Fracture Management Hand and Wrist, Jesse B. Jupiter Team Verlag Grupper, Stuttgart ISBN, 3,131,276,118. We would like to thank the authors listed below for their exceptional work. Jesse B. Jupiter, Douglas A. Campbell, Fieschi Nunes. Imaging? Obtaining a full series of scaphoid X-rays of the affected and normal contralateral side is necessary for surgical planning. Equipment? Headless compression screw set 2.4 or 3.0. 1.1 mm K wires. Osteotome? Image intensifier. Position the patient supine and place the forearm on the hand table. Supinate the forearm. A non-sterile pneumatic tourniquet is used. Prophylactic antibiotics are optional. Approach. In cases where reduction cannot be achieved closed, a direct open approach is necessary. The surgical approach used for this patient was a Palmer approach involving a radial longitudinal angled skin incision, see figure. Hyperextended the wrist. To assist in the approach, Place a rolled towel or bolster under the wrist and hyperextend it. The use of the support helps access the correct entry point or a guide wire. This position also helps to reduce the scaphoid fragments. Determine the insertion point for the guide wire. The correct entry point or the guide wire is the center of the distal pole of the scaphoid. However, to get proper access, it may be necessary to remove the palmar ridge or the trapezium with an osteotome or a bone nebula slash wronger. This reveals the distal pole of the scaphoid and allows the path of the guide wire to be made more centrally within the bone. Insert the guide wire. The guide wire should be inserted through a drill guide, a, if no drill guide is available, use a protective sleeve. The position of the wire should be as perpendicular as possible to the fracture line, B. In oblique fractures, this principle may have to be compromised. Do not penetrate beyond the proximal cortex of the scaphoid. Insert the guide wire. A second K wire is useful to prevent rotation of the fragments as compression is achieved. The second K wire should be removed before the final tightening of the screw. Image intensification in at least two planes is used to confirm the accurate advancement of the guide wire in the scaphoid axis and perpendicular to the fracture plane. The reduction can often be achieved by compression alone as the cannulated screw is carefully inserted. Measure screw length. Two methods can be employed or measuring the desired length of the headless screw. Insert the dedicated measuring device over the guide wire through the drill guide which must be firmly positioned on the tubercle or a reliable measurement, A, as shown on the patient, B, alternatively, if the dedicated measuring device is not available, take another guide wire of the same length and place its tip onto the bone at the insertion point, C, the difference between the protruding ends of the two wires indicates the length of the drill hole or the screw. Subtract 2 to 3 millimeters to determine the screw length. Drilling. Use only the dedicated drill bit. A power drill will exert less force on the fragments than manual drilling and will reduce the risk of displacing the fragments. A small power drill with slow rotation is the preferred choice. Use saline solution to cool the drill bit to minimize thermal injury. Check the position of the tip O the drill bit under image intensification. Select screw. Select the appropriately sized cannulated headless compression screw. The selected screw is inserted into the internal thread of the compression sleeve. The screw and compression sleeve are inserted over the guide wire. The screw is tightened until sufficient compression is achieved. Insert the screw. The cannulated screwdriver is inserted. The compression sleeve is held still using the thumb and index finger to firmly hold the compression sleeve, 
as the screwdriver turns the screw and advances it out of the compression sleeve and into the bone. Compression is maintained by the compression sleeve during this action. Advance and countersink the screw. The screwdriver has three colored markings that are visible at the edge of the compression sleeve. The green mark indicates the screw is still fully retained within the compression sleeve, A, the yellow mark indicates the screw has been advanced level with the surface of the bone, B, the red mark indicates the screw has been countersunk 2 mm under the bone surface, C, countersink the screw by turning the screwdriver shaft while simultaneously holding the compression sleeve stationary. Ensure correct screw and thread length. It is vital that the threaded section of the tip of the screw passes completely beyond the fracture plane. If interfragmentary compression is to be achieved. Also ensure that the screw is not too long nor over tightened as it could protrude beyond the cortical surface and loose compression, or endanger the soft tissues, especially tendons and neurovascular structures. Complete the fixation. Before final tightening, remove the guide wire. Make sure that the threads at the near end of the screw are fully buried in the bone at the insertion site. Check the final position of the screw and scaphoid stability using image intensification or x-rays. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Like, comment and subscribe to my non-profit channel, and support orthopedic education worldwide.